this game is very hard. World Rally Fever Born on the Road is definitely a curiosity. Fun fact, I do not own this game physically. I saw this on GOG a long time ago and I had to immediately investigate. I decided to do it for the channel so I filmed it from the beginning. And good thing too so you can see how hard this beast can be. Before we get into the gameplay though, let's do the background check. World Rally Fever is a bit elusive. Wikipedia has maybe two sentences on the game. Oldgames.com has a quite a bit of info, but needless to say, the history lesson today will be short. World Rally Fever was developed by Team 17, the group behind the Worm series. Ocean published the game, and seeing Ocean for me is kind of like seeing ValueSoft. And if you don't remember from the Team Turbo video we did, that is not a good feeling. I personally know Ocean for Fighter's Destiny on Nintendo 64. But because of the likes of the Angry Video Game Nerd, I know them as the guys who made Waterworld for Virtual Boy. Ocean. Waterworld. Get it. World Rally Fever released in 1996 for DOS. The packaging looks absolutely amazing. I found a listing on eBay for the floppy disk version, but I can't find one selling a CD-ROM. And yes, it, it does exist, but no one is selling it. So if you happen to have it and you're willing to part with it, contact us. So what about the game itself? You drive the same buggy throughout the entire game, but you can switch characters before each cup. Now these cups range in difficulty and tracks. There's 10 locations with a variation in the tracks. Supposedly, there's different attributes to the different characters, but from my experience, no matter who I used, I still accelerated at an incredibly painfully slow rate. Got stuck in hit stun for a thousand hours for hitting anything. Hitting obstacles unless I jumped at the pixel perfect time and I still fell off the track. This game is incredibly difficult. I started to have some success with this dude who looks very king-like. I think this is coincidental as I was, you know, mastering the driving as I, as I went on. People say on the interwebs that the jump height is a factor, like some of the characters jump higher than the others, but it still requires some incredible, impeccable timing. I'll just stick with what I'm doing and use the guy that I'm doing the best with. Once I finally became competitive and I stopped hitting every single sheep in the road, I could actually review this Ninja Gaiden of racers. Right away, you probably noticed the anime art style. This is 90% of the reason this game is a love. Usually any review I read starts with amazing art style or best DOS anime or something along those lines. The intro sequence is very 90s anime. It is very appealing to the eye, regardless of the crappy draw distance and the crazy amounts of... screen tearing? I guess that's what those lines are. Maybe they're CRT scan lines. That was a joke, by the way. For a game from the 90s, this has some amazing tiny little detail. The buggy's also very well animated. After SWAT 4, some people wanted me to do a graphical comparison when I bring up the subject, like what's it look like compared to other games from its era. However, doing that here doesn't really bring any value. World Rally Fever's an art style of its own. I cannot think of many anime racers, especially in that time. The racing games that came out in the 90s usually went for a more realistic style graphic, excluding Mario 64. This was during the graphics race, as, like I said, Mario Kart 64, and the name was put there because it was like, hey, we're 64-bit. Due to this, most of the games went for a more realistic look. It was one of the reasons why the 3DO and CDI were produced in 93 and 91. Graphics were the selling point in a much more extreme fashion than today. Every racer I know from the 90s looks very different than World Rally Fever. Again, Mario Kart being the only difference, it's really hard to compare in terms of good or bad. Like how I went on a tangent about graphics to extend the length of the video? Yeah, I thought it was cool. One thing that is very interesting, speaking of graphics, is that developers decided to add a camera that follows the track. So, like, when you're driving, your position of your car doesn't control the camera, the track controls the camera. Now, the only reason why this is bad is because it's hard to tell when you're supposed to turn, but it was a good way to, like, mask some graphical problems. I'm not really a tech genius. I don't really know anything about DOS rendering, but I feel like this camera tilt was part of the reason why this game looks so good. It gives you this illusion of 3D when the game really isn't 3D. If that makes sense, I probably just sound like an idiot just now. 
But like I said, it's hard to tell when you have to turn because the camera's always moving and sometimes you overcorrect. It's kind of hard to explain. Just pick it up one day and you'll see what I mean. The game is an arcade format. The credits made me believe this was an arcade game, but as far as I know, no cabinet exists. You need a podium finish to make it to the next race, and you need to finish in first place to win the cup. I've only managed to win one so far. There's a few weapons in the game. You get them by going under this weapons bar thingy. They all make the same noise when deployed. Some of them go backwards, but without a rear view mirror, it's hard to aim the attack. The weapons are definitely lackluster. It's just boxes with turds on them half the time. I guess it's time to mention the bad aspects. For me, the difficulty isn't the problem. Here lately, I've been loving the challenging gameplay. Once you master the mechanics, you can totally win at this game. But the first bad thing, and probably the biggest and only bad thing, is the opponents. I say this is bad with a grain of sand. This issue honestly depends on what type of racing game you seek. The opposing racers evenly space out and never change in position. This is very typical of arcade racers like Pole Position or OutRun. There is no end fighting. The racers finish in a predefined position. But honestly, with the already set difficulty of the tracks, I don't mind not having to fight three other racers for the same position as I'm jumping over holes. On sale, a great price for DOS fans and retro games fans alike. And all you weebs out there will love the quiet art style. Yeah, I tried to appeal to you, but I can't. Sorry. I had fun playing it, and I'm going to try to complete it off camera, of course. It's sort of a challenge for me. I feel like this game has bested me, and I can't let it win, which is why I give it the blue thumbs up. I got it for like two bucks on us GOG sale. Definitely worth it. I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm going to continue to have a lot of fun with it. Understand that it's an old style racer and don't expect much depth, but what you get is a challenge and a kicking soundtrack. I'm Elijah Wynn Blackwell, founder of CD ROM Fossil. So make sure you check out the website because I'm doing a new series, Game of the Week. This week I'm talking about Tom Clancy's SSN. Also, we added a follow feature on our website, so if you enter your email address and you click follow, you'll be able to get email notifications when a new article releases. This is for all you non WordPress users out there. Lastly, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. If you have any requests, let us know. We'll we'll do pretty much anything if if we can get our hands on it. And uh, so for now, I'm gonna go try to complete this uh, hard beast.